Yeah, so where do we think about where should our future investments go in terms mm -hmm. of building facilities? Mm -hmm. Wait, what do we do about the people who are already incarcerated? And then what do we do about the individuals mm -hmm. who may find themselves institutionally involved? Because mm -hmm. I think that when you think about the discussion, part of it is about the philosophy around building more institutions. And you know, many of us have heard the stat of they determine how many jails to build based on test third scores, grade, yeah. third mm -hmm. grade test scores. Mm -hmm. And then we think about the people who are currently incarcerated. And then you think about the people who will need to cross your threshold and what do you think about in terms of preventative? So I just wonder mm -hmm. if you can kind of walk through all three of those in well, the conversation and, and how you think about them. First, I'm gonna say mm -hmm. that these are my personal opinions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. any judge has to follow the law. Mm -hmm. So it's not yeah. like I can just, you know, throw statutes to the wind mm -hmm. and do what I want. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, my personal opinion is, is very much in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, so I do, th I'm not a big fan of private prisons because mm -hmm. it just seems like a slippery slope when mm -hmm. a for-profit entity is in charge of a mm -hmm. prison, you mm -hmm. know, because there's incentive to yeah. send people to prison. Yeah. But um, so I do think we need prisons mm -hmm. because I do think no, I know mm -hmm. that I have seen with my own eyes mm -hmm. and experienced people that I don't want to send back into anyone's neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that there are money is well spent mm -hmm. in those alternative sentencing mm -hmm. spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm, you know, squarely in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I also think that we need to think you can almost look at this and, and we're here, there are mm -hmm. economists here. Mm -hmm. um, even if you come at this issue from a allocation of resources mm -hmm. and spending money um, perspective, mm -hmm. because so I was a trial court judge in an urban county and I would go to judicial conferences and the, the resources, the options that I had for sentencing were infinitely more mm -hmm than in a rural county. Of where you could send people. Oh yeah, because based on the in a, in a yeah. rural county, sometimes it's prison, prison or probation. And those are, there's no, nothing mm -hmm. in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that can be a hard choice. Mm -hmm. And so, but even within that, I could only give people so many chances mm -hmm. because I couldn't create more beds. Mm -hmm. And so at some point I had to say, I can't give you any more chances because there's somebody else that needs that bed in the mental health hospital mm, or, or treatment someone, facility. yes, that treatment yeah. facility or someone who needs that space at the mm -hmm. community-based corrections facility. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's about how we allocate not only our people, but also our money. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at one time to, and I'm not sure, I haven't checked the numbers recently, but at one time it was more expensive to house someone in a prison than it was tuition at Ohio State. Hmm. And doesn't that sound yeah, backwards? Right. You right. know? Totally. Um, so I think that we need to make up our minds, you know, do we want to be rehabilitative or do mm -hmm. we want to be punitive? Mm -hmm. And then we allocate our resources accordingly. Mm -hmm. What about people who are currently incarcerated and what do you think about, should we be revisiting sentences for people on say marijuana charges? Should mm -hmm. we be looking at reduced sentences? Should we, you know, during COVID, a number of people were released. Are mm -hmm. there ways that we should be thinking about the current uh, prison population and jail population? Well, let me and ask you a question. Problem? Yeah. Do you want to be judged for something that you did at 20? Hmm. Given that we went to college together. That's yeah. why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you, don't, you, don't, you don't ask right, questions right, you don't know right, the answer to. Right. So, yeah. Given yeah, that night at yeah. the World Bar on my oh. 21st birthday. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. My 21st birthday. birthday. Yes. yes. My 21st birthday yes. left marks on the wall. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, but you, you see what I'm saying? So yeah, like, you know, yeah. from that era, you had people with a little bit of weed that still, 
you know, that, mm -hmm. that are still incarcerated. Yeah. And they had a little bit of weed at 20 and they're still in there at 40. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. And you know, certain, certain crimes are bad enough mm -hmm. that somebody should do something at 20 and still be in there at mm -hmm. 40, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but there are others that I don't think that they, they should. Mm -hmm. um, because I know personally, well, I look at back at myself and I was one person at 18, another at 25, mm -hmm. another th at 30, another mm -hmm. at 35. And, and, you know, now, honestly, at 48, you know, I know my strengths and weaknesses and I know what's going to change and what isn't. Mm -hmm. um, and the thought of, you know, you had a dime bag three times in your 20s and now you're still in your 40s in prison. Mm -hmm. That's kind of tough to swallow. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't make a lot of sense and it's not necessarily how I want my tax dollars spent. Mm -hmm.